Hello and welcome to the Intermediate Downloads training class. In the introduction class, we covered the process of setting up your system to receive carrier downloads. Today's class is going to focus on the topics of processing download transactions that may still need matching, how to run download reports, and a general overview of the download section as we go along. Now the first screen that we see whenever we log into the system I have displayed right now this is the dashboard for QQ Catalyst. Once you have your system set up to receive carrier downloads and you've contacted all of your carriers to advise them they can start sending over those download transactions, we'll find those transactions coming into our system under the more option from the global navigation toolbar we can click on the download section. So here we are in the carrier download section. You'll notice there's a couple options up at the top in the dark gray toolbar. The downloads button will allow us to process downloads manually. Now if you have scheduled downloads enabled at a specific time every day, which you can usually see listed in the recent activity as well, I have my scheduled downloads enabled to occur at 1 a.m. every morning, then I would not need to initiate the download process manually. It's already set up to happen every day at a specific time. However, if I do need to initiate a download process, I do have the option from the toolbar to click on the download button and indicate which of my agency office locations I'm trying to receive the download transactions for. When I tell it OK, it's going to search my Ivan's mailbox to see if there's any download transactions that it can bring into Catalyst. Also from the toolbar, you have the option to reprocess all of the downloads that are in your need matching section. These are download transactions that came into your system and for one reason or another we were not able to find a perfect match to customer or policy information already entered into Catalyst or we found more than one possible match and didn't want to create a duplicate without your manual input. So these items have been left in a need matching section. If I've made some changes to the system that that should allow some of these to match up on their own now, then I can go ahead and click reprocess to begin the matching process all over again. I can indicate which office location we're trying to rematch for, or if we're trying to reprocess the direct bill commission downloads, which we'll take a look at in a moment as well. You also have the ability to print a report from the toolbar up top. You'll also find this report in the reports library, the carrier download report. It's going to allow me to specify which of the transactions that I want on the report. By default, all of them are selected. You're completed, your need matching, your print only items, and any transactions that have failed. However, if I only want to see one or a few of these, I can deselect some. I can always reselect them again. So maybe I only want to run the report with my completed and my need matching transactions. I can indicate how we want to sort the information either by the transaction type, by customer, or by carrier. And if I want the date type on the report to follow the download date or the import date. The download date would be the day that the information came into the carrier download section. The import date would be the day that we successfully matched that download transaction to a customer or a policy in our system. So the day that it was actually completed. And then I can specify a date range for the report. As well as which office locations I want to pull information from. So if I only want to see information from my training main office, I can deselect the other two, and I can choose to export this to a PDF or a spreadsheet. Make sure your pop-up blocker for your web browser is allowing pop-ups from QQ Catalyst. If you click Run and you don't see your report pop up in a separate window, then you may have a pop-up blocker that's blocking the report from displaying. If you're running this in Google Chrome, you can always go up into your settings and you can change your pop-up blocker settings here to allow pop-ups for QQ Catalyst. So here's my downloads report. We can see the filters that are specified on this report up top. And we're looking at just the training main office is what I had asked for. But if I did ask for the other office locations, notice that it does group them one at a time. So I'm seeing there's 249 records for the training main office. And then it will further group those transactions by their status. So we're looking first at the completed items. There's 79 records here. 
Now we'll see the type of transaction that was downloaded, whether it was a cancellation, new business, renewal, a database synchronization, just updating the existing customer policy information. We can see if this contact has been updated or if the contact was imported as new because we were not able to find a match and you told the system to create a new customer for you. You can see the same information with the policy. If we updated it by matching it to an existing policy or if it was imported as a new policy that did not exist prior. You can see any premium change that was created by this download transaction processing as well. And it'll tell you if this was processed in the semi-automatic mode, the manual mode, or the automatic mode. We do cover the different import mode types in the initial intro class. I can save a copy of this report or print it down at the bottom right. And I can close out when I'm done with this here. The last item in the toolbar is to remove the completed items. You'll notice here that we have 79 transactions that have completed successfully. There's 170 in my need matching section. And I have zero print only and zero that have failed. Of these categories, the tabs down here will correspond to them. So I can see here the 79 transactions in my completed section. And if I want to view the customer or policy information that was downloaded successfully, I can click right on the customer's name. I'm just going to tell this to open in a new tab. And it will direct me to that customer's contact page in the system. I can do the same thing with the policy. If I click on the policy number or the effective date, it'll redirect me to this specific policy under that specific customer in our system. So I can review the information that's downloaded. I can make sure my commission information is populating correctly for my agency or my producers. And if I'm satisfied that everything looks good in the completed section, you do have the option to remove these transactions either one at a time by clicking on remove. or I can click the Remove Completed from the toolbar, and I can specify a date range up to which I would like to remove all transactions. And I can choose which office location that's for. Now one thing to keep in mind, you do not need to remove transactions. Catalyst will keep a running list of your transactions here. It'll just continue to add additional pages if need be. One reason to save your completed transactions is the ability to roll back a transaction if it was processed incorrectly. So if Perry Jones here was incorrectly processed, maybe we matched him to the wrong customer, the wrong policy, I can click here to roll back the transaction. Catalyst will give me a warning letting me know that this will not automatically undo any changes made to the contact or to the policy. So if there was a change made, I would need to go into that contact or policy and manually void or undo that change before I roll back this transaction so I can go ahead and try and process it again. Then I can click yes, the transaction will be removed from the completed section and it will move back into the need matching section. So Perry Jones would be somewhere here in our need matching items again. Before they were 170, now they're 171. Now your need matching items are going to be the transactions, as I mentioned, that were not able to process. So these came into the system and they either could not find an exact match based on the matching criteria, or they found more than one possible match. When a download transaction comes in from the carrier, the system will try to match it to your existing customers and policies based on a hierarchy of criteria. The very first item the system looks for is the NAIC code assigned to the matching carrier. Each carrier is going to have its own unique NAIC code which you can assign on the carrier contact specifically. We'll look at that in a moment when we start matching up some of these transactions. Once it can find the matching NAIC code, it's going to look for the matching customer based on the name, the address, and the phone number. If it finds a perfect match for name, address, and phone number on the customer, then it will look for matching policy information under that customer, which it will base on things like policy number, effective date, line of business. 
if it can find a perfect match for the carrier, the customer, and the policy based on that criteria, it will go ahead and complete the process on its own as long as your import mode is set to either semi-automatic or automatic. The import mode we recommend the most is semi-automatic and we cover the import modes in a bit more detail in the intro class. If it's on semi-automatic and it cannot find a match, it's going to leave it in the need matching section so that we do not create duplicates. And then at that point, it's up to you to come in here and assist the system with trying to match up the transaction. We'll take a look at matching some of these in just a moment. I just want to cover the other two tabs here. The print only tab is going to house any documents that the carrier sends as part of that download that do not directly affect updating a customer or policy information in your system. These might include things like direct bill commission statements. Now if you have your direct bill commission statement downloads disabled, then you'll find your direct bill commission statements will populate in the print only section. Once the direct bill commission downloads are enabled, you will have a separate area here where you can view direct bill commission downloads. We'll take a look at those in a moment as well. But here in the print only section, you will have the ability to click on the file type to download a hard copy of it to your computer. Again, you can remove items from the print only tab once you've downloaded the copy. You'll have a remove button on the far right, just like we saw with the completed tabs and with the need matching tabs. Keep in mind for need matching, you can remove these, but if you have not matched this policy or this transaction to a customer or policy in your system, you're probably going to not want to remove this yet, as this is an update coming directly from the carrier. If you have any transactions that the system is not able to process, it might be for reasons such as the file being corrupt, it might be for reasons such as the information coming over from the carrier is not currently supported, these transactions may end up in the fail tab. If you do have any items in the fail tab, I would advise contacting our product support team. Under the support training option here, you can find their contact information. They can probably help assist with figuring out why the transaction failed and seeing if there's any resolution that we might have to get that transaction resent through Ivan's or to try to get it to process correctly in the system for you. Down here as well, you'll also find the training classes and on-demand training links. Training classes will connect you to any of our live weekly group webinars that we conduct for free. You can register as many times as you might want and ask as many questions as you might have during the session. And the on-demand training is going to have all of those classes that we teach weekly in a recorded fashion so you can view them 24-7. Taking a look back at our need matching tab, when we want to start trying to match up the transactions here, the first step is going to be to click on the green arrow on the far right to show transaction details. So here we can see the customer Elizabeth Hudson, the customer's address, the policy number, the effective date, and the carrier, and the line of business. Once we click on the green arrow to show these details, we get the status, the transaction type, the effective date, the premium, and any premium change from what was in our system previously. Now effective date is going to refer to the effective date of the transaction. So in the case where it's a new business or renewal, it's probably going to match the effective date of the policy lifted, listed above. But if this was an endorsement, we would see the specific effective date of that endorsement listed. The most important items here to make note of are the status and the transaction type. Transaction type is going to tell us exactly what we're trying to download into the system. Is it new business? An endorsement? Is it a renewal? Is it a cancellation? Is it a database update? Just a database synchronization. The status is going to tell us specifically why the system was not able to complete this matching process on its own. Some of the statuses you may come across might include customer not matched, policy not matched, carrier not matched. If you see statuses indicating not matched, it's either because we couldn't find a perfect match based on NAIC code, customer and policy, or that we found more than one possible match and we didn't want to create a duplicate or complete the transaction under the wrong contact type. So the system's looking for a little bit of input from you here. To initiate the matching process, you're just going to click on the customer's name to go through the process of matching up 
where the system left off. So here the customer could not be matched, which means we did find a matching NAIC code for the carrier. So the very first step we're looking at after we've matched the carrier is matching the customer. Here we can see the information the carrier sends. It's always going to be listed up top. So we see Elizabeth Hudson, her address, and down below we have possible matches that Catalyst is suggesting. So these are contacts that are already in our system. And Catalyst is saying that these might be possible matches based on similar name, address, or phone number. Anything highlighted in a light blue color is a possible match because of the similarity of the information. Now if you have a couple pages here, we can flip through them easily to see do we have one where everything lights up blue, which would indicate a perfect match for us. Or do we have one that's at least similar? Maybe we didn't have a match for Elizabeth Hudson because we have her in under her maiden name, and maybe the carrier sent it in under her married name. If there's a little bit of discrepancy in the information, it's not going to be a perfect match, and the system will hold it here so we don't create a, an account, a duplicate account. Now, if I don't want to have to go through all the different pages, you can also click down here at the bottom and just say search. Or if it doesn't give you any suggested matches and you want to search the system before telling it to create the new policy or create the new customer, we can say search. And then we can search ourselves for a match for this customer. And I might just want to look for her first name, her last name, address, phone number, anything I can think of that might pull up the match. Now, if I determine that I do not have this customer in my system, I'm going to tell the system to create a new customer and create a new policy based on the information that the carrier sent over with the download. If I determine that one of these is the matching customer, I would just click on the customer's name to say, yes, this is the same Elizabeth, we want to match it here. Now this step here is allowing me to select my agent, my CSR, and any producers that are going to be getting paid portion of the commission because I have it set to a manual process. If I'd have this set on semi-automatic, you do have the option to make this step automatic where it can follow a hierarchy where the system will look for a prior policy to see if there's an agent and CSR assigned. If it can't find a prior policy, it'll look for a prior customer to see if there's an agent or CSR. If it doesn't find a prior policy or prior customer, it looks at the default settings that you have entered in the location preferences. And if you did not set up a default agent or CSR there, it will revert to whoever is logged into the system processing that transaction at the time. I did have mine set to manual for this demonstration, so I can actually select my agent CSR and any producers now. So you'll always get a transaction summary as the last page. This one here is showing again the information sent by the carrier and the action that we told the system to take. We said that we found the customer. We said that Elizabeth Green was the same as Elizabeth Hudson. This was the actual matching customer. So we're telling the system to just update the existing customer. And then we're telling the system to add the policy. It did not find a matching policy under that customer or a prior policy, so it knows to go ahead and add the new policy since this was a renewal transaction type. And we can see the agent CSRs or producers. Now if I'm satisfied and click finish to process the transaction. If I need to back up at all, I can click previous. I can go back a step or two. Maybe I determine that this is not someone who's in my system. We're back to the step where we were searching for the customer. And rather than clicking on Elizabeth Green, maybe I've decided that she is not the match. I need the system to create the new customer policy. So I can tell it create new. Again, we can sele select the agent, CSR, or producers. And now notice our transaction page is a little bit different. We have, again, the information the carrier sent about the customer, but we are adding the customer to this office location since we indicated we did not have a match. And again, because there was no customer, the system knows to automatically add the policy since there was no matching prior policy there. We have our agent, our CSRs, and our producers listed, and we can click Finish. Whenever you click Finish, it will complete the matching process, updating the customer and the policy information with what the carrier sent over. This will effectively remove that item from your Need Matching tab, and it will put it into your Completed tab. So there's Elizabeth Hudson, 
her policy and just like before I can click on the links here for the customer or the policy if I want to review the information that the download has created for me so this customer and policy was created from the new download now another status type you might come across in the need matching section is carrier not matched now this is because the carrier is not in my system or the carriers NAIC code cannot be found in my system so here I have bankers and I click on the customers name to begin the matching process and the system gives me a warning that we cannot find the matching carrier for this NAIC code which belongs to this carrier so catalyst will tell you exactly the NAIC code it's looking for and the carrier that it should belong to I can highlight and copy that information as I just did I can go into my contacts and I can do a search for the carrier before I decide to add the new contact and here we see we do have bankers as a carrier if I didn't have them as a carrier I would go to new contact and create a new carrier and I would assign the NAIC code that I copied from the download sections however since I have bankers in my system I can go into the carrier to verify if the NAIC code is accurate or if it's entered at all so here on the carrier page we can see there is no NAIC code currently entered so I can edit and I can paste the NAIC code remember it is five digits so get rid of the rest of the information there and we'll click Save so now bankers has an NAIC code assigned if I go back into the carrier download section and I click on Gab Gabrielle it'll now take me to the matching the customer process the system is now able to find the matching NAIC code and we're looking for the matching customer so again we have the information the carrier sent up top the suggested matches down below or I can search my system for the specific customer if I don't want to have to go through the pages of suggested matches if I determine I don't have a match I'm telling it to create new let's say that on this one we determine that let's say crystal is the match here maybe this was the sister's name so I'm indicating that's the matching customer again we're assigning agent CSR and producers so here we're updating the customer with the one that was already in our system the information the carrier sent over listed above and we're adding the policy it was a new business policy so it didn't even bother looking for a matching policy so there is some logic that's built into the system if it's new business it's gonna know to go ahead and add the new policy and not try to look for a matching policy so we click finish and again that will remove itself from the need matching items and add itself to the completed tab for us so if you ever have a case where the carrier cannot be matched check the carrier in your system make sure it exists and make sure the NEIC code is correct as indicated by the carrier download section now if you notice there's a couple other transactions I had for banker security if I had 50 transactions for banker security and they were all held up previously because we couldn't find the matching carrier and I just created that NAIC code rather than going in and doing them one at a time this would be a good time to use the reprocess option from the toolbar because it will go back through all of the need matching items and it will try to find a match for them once again and if the only thing holding up these was the fact that it couldn't find an NAIC code it'll be able to complete those for you this time around